want to go to Exodus 8. We're going to go to Exodus 8. And uh, y'all may have heard this story before. So um, if so, maybe hopefully I'll bring out a new little thought to it. It says in verse 1, God said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him God's message. Release my people so that they can worship me. Release my people so that they can worship me. You know, worship is connected directly to our freedom. The level on which I worship today in this room is connected to if I'm free, if I'm bound. Many times if we're bound, we have trouble worshiping because we're not free. And I've been to many churches in my life or I've seen people in worship not be able to lift their hands and not have freedom. And because that church is bound and they have the stuff that they've chosen to stick with, God's saying, really, it's hard to worship. So guess what? I love our church. Our church is a, a church of freedom. And you guys have committed your lives to saying, I'm not going to live in a certain way. I'm going to get rid of stuff. And because of that, we have a culture and a DNA where we're saying, we need to worship radically. And he goes, I want to set you free. And the reason I set you free is not to live the old way you used to live. Live. I purposed to, in mind to, to, to set you free so that you can be free and worshiping me and serving me and loving me and, and adoring me. And you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be fearful in your worship. You can be reckless in your worship. Amen. And that's why we are fearless in our worship because God has freed us and done a lot in our life. Can anyone testify of that? He's done a lot. He's made a way where there seemed to be no way. He's crossed mountains for us. He's, he's moved the hurdles. He's pushed through some things and some of us would have been having a nervous breakdown and we would have been dead if it weren't for Jesus and what he's done so we have a reason in our freedom to praise God we have a reason to worship we have a reason to thank him we have a reason to lift up our hands we have a reason to begin to bless him with our voice we shouldn't be silent we shouldn't be ashamed we shouldn't feel stupid about it we should be foolish about it it says if you refuse to release them now, this is Moses talking to a uh, uh, Pharaoh. If you refuse to release them, I'm warning you, I'll hit the whole country with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs. They'll come up in your houses, into your bedrooms, into your beds, into your servants' quarters, among the people, into your ovens and pots and pans. They'll be all over you, all over everyone. What a nightmare. Frogs everywhere, on and in everything. God says to Moses, tell Aaron, wave your staff. He's refusing. He's, his heart's hardened. How do we soften his heart? Let's just begin to do this. So wave your staff over the rivers and canals and ponds. Bring up frogs on the land of Egypt. Aaron stretched his staff over the waters of Egypt and a mob, everyone turn your neighbor and say a mob of frogs. Turn your neighbor and say that is disgusting. Came up and covered the whole country. Can you even imagine this? I mean, I don't like a couple frogs. I'm okay with maybe one, but I'm talking <laughs> billions. These are like the black, blue, red frogs. They're all colors. They're the ones with the warts that look like they have a uh, disease on them. All these disease frogs, they have diseases. So they're millions and billions of frogs. I mean, and there's no announcement that they're coming. You know, there's no like, hey, I want to let you know the TV pro program comes on in the news. Hey, newsflash, there's, there's a warning, a big warning. There's going to be frogs that invade the land at 3 a.m. I just want you to know social media is not kind of letting you know on your Instagram feed. It doesn't pop up. You know, it doesn't pop up on your Facebook. You have no clue it's happening. So at 3 a.m. in the morning, you're in the middle of the night. You're sleeping. You're having wonderful dreams. You're laying down and all of a sudden you feel stuff just crawling all over your body and then you opened your eyes and you see the warded frog that is all over you 10 million frogs just covering your body from head to toe you cannot roll you cannot move they're everywhere they're every inch of your body and your skin and I'm looking at Jeremy and Jeremy's got them covered all over him how disgusting would this be and it's everywhere I mean they're in their pots they're saying they're in the pants they're cooking frog legs they're cooking frog grits they're cooking frog frog jambalaya they're cooking frogs everything just you know mexican food with the frogs it's it's good stuff you know what i'm saying you start to like trying to like the frogs you're not sure what to do you go in the, they're in the microwave they're jumping out and, and and while you're taking a bath you're taking a shower they're coming out of the bathtub water they're coming you know they're going up when, when you're trying to go to the bathroom they're popping up in, in your butt you know what i'm saying like they're they're like yes i'm trying to paint it and you can't catch it are you can i mean they're everywhere frogs everywhere plaguing this land man it 
it's just, it's just, it's just overwhelming. This is what it says, verse 7. But again, the magicians did the same thing using their incantations. How stupid are they? They also produced frogs in Egypt. Oh, how foolish. Stupid magicians. Pharaoh called in Moses and Aaron and said, so Pharaoh's like, done. I'm done. This is enough. I'm done with these plagues. They had all these different plagues, 10 different plagues, flies, locusts, tons of different things. Then this, he goes, I just need you to do something. Pharaoh called in Moses and Aaron and said, pray to your God to get rid of these frogs. I'll release the people so that they can make their sacrifices and worship God. Moses said to Pharaoh, certainly. Pharaoh, it's up to you. I can pray. I can pray and tell God whenever. Just set the time. So at the time, when do you want the frogs out of here, away from your servants and people and out of your houses? You'll be rid of the frogs except for those in the Nile. You'll be rid. Guess what? I can do this. I should actually go and pray right now and ask God to get rid of the billions of frogs that are plaguing you right now. I just need you to know God can do it. He's willing to do it, everything, you know, but just tell me the time. And this is what Pharaoh says in response, look at what his response is. Let's make it tomorrow. One of the weirdest, one of the dumbest responses I have probably seen in the entire Bible is make it, set the time, but, oh, okay, not right now. Let's just make it, let me live one more time with billions of th- just plaguing my life. I want, now, now listen, it's mind-boggling to me. Now, in L.A., let's just, just say there was a huge outbreak, an outbreak tonight of, of just, I'm thinking of the worst things, snakes and spiders, both. Just, I mean, both of them, the double whammy. Sna- I, I thought about getting snakes and spiders here, but I know it would freak everyone out. I mean, tarantulas, the big, crazy spiders, uh, uh, snakes, Billions. I mean, you can't even see the floor of L.A. They're covering L.A. They're covering walls. They're covering our house. So at 3 in the morning, we, we, I wake up. I feel something slithering. And literally, I open my eyes, and I am in a bed of snakes and spiders. They're covering me. They're trying to get in my mouth. They're, I'm swallowing a spider. I'm choking on a spider. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at Jeremy, and then I scream. Uh, I scream like I am dying. And then I look at him, and then he screams like he's dying, too like a girl and then and then I'm like I've never heard that scream honey what is going on this is crazy look at the snakes and I'm freaking out I'm freaking out I see all these black snakes I'm like oh my gosh let's get lyric and brave and we're just like running around I can see it's just like running around like we're people in a circus like freaking out I'm freaking out I'm getting a broom I'm swatting them like flies I'm just trying to get them out of my face out of my hair I can't get away from the billions and billions of snakes and of spiders. And then there's a knock at the door. And I'm like, honey, go get it. I can't even, I can't do this. I'm bawling, crying, I'm screaming, I'm just, I'm out of it. And then he gets to the door and there's this guy with a little white suit on. And he's got a pump in his hand with a bunch of special sauce. And he goes, hey, guess what? If, and Jeremy's like, wait, 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 who are you? He goes, well, I'm the special exterminator. I'm the man of the day. She was like, great, what, what is going on? He goes, well, I have this special spray. So anytime I pump this spray, in the moment, I've already tried it, it works, I'm guaranteed. In the moment I spray it, these things, the spiders and the snakes will leave and they will die right then when I spray it. Oh, he, you, this spray will do this right now as snakes are literally crawling all over Jeremy's body and my kids are screaming, I'm holding them, I'm trying to swat this stuff. He goes, this, the guy goes in the white suit, he goes, when, when can I do this? Can I do this right now? Because I can do it and can come in your house, they'll be gone right now. Jeremy goes, ah, eh, I don't know. A spider's crawling in his mouth. Well, let's just, let's make it tomorrow. Hey, could, could you just come back tomorrow? Honey. Are you freaking kidding me? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? Yes, you have lost your ever-loving mind. And I cannot imagine. But in this story, this is exactly what is happening. And this is exactly what happens in our life, right? 
There's things that are attacking us, that are tormenting us, that are all over our lives, that are, that are weighing us down, that are, that are causing us to slow our life, delaying our destiny. And they are just, they have, they've destroyed our life. They, they're bothering us. They're tormenting us. And God can get rid of them. He, he, he has the ability to do it. He says, I will do it in this moment. And you go, yeah, I do want to be set free. I really want that. I see other people getting set free. But guess what? I want God to do it tomorrow no no tomorrow is not the day today is the day of deliverance today is the day of victory today is the day to draw a line in the sand and say devil no more no devil not today i i I need to go hey i'm not waiting for tomorrow any longer I'm not going to keep procrastinating. I'm not going to keep pushing this off. You know, there's, there was a, a cool slogan that Nike came out with this huge thing in 2008. You could put it up and it says, yesterday, you said what? Tomorrow. They even catch it. They're going, yesterday, why, why do you keep pushing this off? You're, they're, they're talking about anything that you want to do in life. Like anything that you want to do that's worth value, that's that you have a, a vision for, you have something that you want to do in, in your life, and you said, I have this, this dream I want to do. And if you have a dream, Nike's kind of going, hey, you can't just wait for it to happen and just hopefully by osmosis it's going to appear and you're going to be ready for it. You've got to prepare today. And you keep saying yesterday, you're going to do it tomorrow, but now you're in today and nothing's changed. So they're going, hey, in all spheres of life, uh, 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 you need to start preparing if you're going to be in, 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 in the medical field. You need to start going to classes. Start pursuing it. Don't be scared. Go after it. Face your fears. You know, if you're going to be a singer, if you're going to be an artist, I want you to start getting those lessons. And I want you to start writing right now, preparing today. It's looking at every area of our life and going, hey, I want to encourage you. Nike's going, hey, yesterday you said tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to start preparing. And I find that we don't ever step into tomorrow tomorrow until we deal with yesterday today right we will never step into our future we exist in today we live in yesterday and we never step into the tomorrow that God has for us because we don't do what God has called us to do right here and right now today he says today I want to do it in your life today freedom is available to you today you can break out of the stuff that you're in but guess what it is up to you under the sound of my voice because people can be under this my whole life. There's been times I've been in church my whole life, and I've seen it. There's some people that can be under this. You can say this is an environment. You can even be amening me right now, but still you live with the same stuff every day. What is it? Like, if it is anger, let's get rid of it today. Like, if it is unforgiveness, it is bitterness, it is a pride. What, what is the areas of our life that we've just lived with and we tolerated? You go, this is just the way I am. This is where I'm going to be. No, no, no. That is not so, people. That is not so, sons and daughters of God. God has given you such a life that you would live an abundant life, not a dead life, not a stagnant life, right? And so God says, don't procrastinate. I've given you this in front of you. You go and, oh, I'll just live one more night wow. with the frogs. Can you see how ridiculous that sounds and how ridiculous that's been when I've done that in my life I mean, me and my sister when I was a teenager we went in the car to go get something we were teenagers we were going to get a dress in Pleasanton y'all know where Pleasanton is in NorCal so we're driving there y'all are from Pleasanton oh that's why you're no okay <laughs> then we we were just driving and then we had this uh DC talk song on a Jesus freak. We were like, what will people think when they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? And we're like singing it. We're like, yeah. And me and my sister were crazy, you know. PKs are usually the craziest. We need the, <laughs> the most help. And so we were, we were singing. And I was like, okay, I hear this rattle in the car. I don't know if it's our car or somebody else's car. But I hear the sound in the car. It doesn't sound good. She goes, yeah, I hear it too. What should we do? I go, let's turn up the music. She goes, okay, let's turn up the music. I go, yeah, that'll be awesome. So we turned it up, and we're like, yeah, what will people think? And we were like jamming. We had the windows down, and we, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so loud. Like, it is really loud. There's something got to be wrong. 
She goes, we can't deal with it right now. We got to go get a dress. You got to go get this done. This has got to happen another day. Dad can take the car in. She said, I said, what do we need to do though? She goes, turn up the music. I go, yeah, we should totally turn up the music. So we like, that's totally two girls in a car, right? There's no men to help us out. Guys, I know you'll help us out in this moment. But, but we were just two girls that were young and we're just like, let's just have fun. We're, we put the music on so loud. It was blaring. Then the, the, the sound got so loud. It was louder than our music. I was like, maybe we should pull over. I was like, yeah, maybe we should. I see the smoke coming from the car, Kay. There's got to be something wrong. And so we moved. We got over. And all of a sudden, we got out the car. And the water pump exploded. And the engine erupted. And there was, like, fire. And there was smoke. And there was flames. And there was tears from me, tears from my sister. We were crying. We are like, what have we done? And I didn't know what to do. I was like, this is all our fault. And I called my dad. I was like, Dad, you don't know what happened. He goes, what happened? I go, our car exploded. It's smoking. It's, he's like, what? It exploded? I go, yes. Uh, what happened? Did you hear anything? Yeah, we heard anything. But we, we heard something, but we turned it up. We just turned the music up. We thought we'll just drown out the sound. It was bothering us. We wanted to have a good trip. He goes, what? You just turned up the music? He goes, you know, you can never just ignore a problem in your car. He goes, hey, when you, you ignore it, that problem doesn't just go away. Actually, that problem just plummets, and it keeps getting worse and keeps getting worse and actually destroys and implodes and destroys the whole card. Even the good stuff, it will destroy that. He goes, you can't put those things off till tomorrow. You can't procrastinate with these car problems. Honey, you can't ever ignore them ever again. You have to deal with them right when it happens. And I say to you today, right when it happens, right when you have it in your life, God says, guess what? When you hold on to it, when you hold on to the fear, when you hold on to the addiction, guess what? It doesn't just go away when you sweep it under the rug. It actually begins to aggravate. It actually begins to grow, and it begins to destroy our life. And I'm going, hey, why don't we just get rid of the stuff that's eventually going to destroy our destiny today and not live one more time? Come on. That's what it's saying. Hey, you could, you could be under great teaching, and some people still... We'll hear this when I'm saying even today and go, that sounds great. And somebody else will change, but somebody else will stay the same. I find it very interesting, you know. There's some people, you could go through, two, both, pe both people have gone through a lot in their life. One person makes a decision. Does God really have, is it that he loves people more? Is it that he, he, he has favorites? I don't believe that God has favorites. He loves us all the same. This, this, this. This word is powerful for every single one of us. This word is, we can all believe this word is true. Why do we doubt this word? I believe the difference is, is faith and doubt. One person doesn't know and really believe this. Or, or one person really believes. Believe, is there, is there any believers that say, God, I know you are who you say you are. I know you have the ability to do what you say you can do in this word. You say you can change things. You say you can move things. You say you can heal me. You say you can restore, but I don't know. I don't know. And that's the point. We stay the same. But we have to have faith in this book. We have to have faith in knowing when he says something, he will be good for it. And he will be good to do it and accomplish it in our life. No more unbelieving believers. We need some believers to stand up and go, hey, I believe this word for my life. It is not just head knowledge. It's not just scriptures I read and regurgitate I know it in my heart and because of that transition from mind to heart from information to revelation revelation changes my life revelation changes my life I need a change in my life too many Christians are sitting sitting and hatching hypocrites because we're sitting in the same place no, 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 not for this church. I don't know about other churches, but we're not going to be that church, right? We're not going to sit one more moment with addiction. Not one more moment. We come under this, this presence of God, and we, we hear about what to do. We hear about giving to God, and you go, I'm going to give to God. I'm going to start giving offerings. I'm going to start tithing. Have you ever said that? I remember saying that. I'll do it, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week, even worse. I'll do it next month. Maybe I'll do it next year because I'll have more money. I'll have a better job. You know, I, I, I'll, maybe I'll, I, I know I need to, I know I need to mend something with this person. 
It's a broken relationship. Maybe it's with your children or maybe it's with a family member, a friendship. But you keep putting it off. Wow. Ah, I don't know if I want to face it. It's hard to talk about it. It's painful to, to revisit the memories. And so it's just too much for me right now. So I'm just going to do it. I'll do it, but I'll do it tomorrow. I, I know I need to start serving in the church. And I, I know I've been coming to fearless. And I, I know that God wants me to, to actually be the church and not just sit in the church. But I need to become that, that person that builds the kingdom. I know I need to do it. I don't need to serve, but I'll do it. And I'll, but I'll do it tomorrow right well the list goes on and on and on I know I need to stop spending money I'll do it tomorrow I know I need to stop pulling for that thing that's addictive in my life but I'm gonna do it I know I'm gonna stop looking at the images I'm gonna stop looking at the pornography I'm gonna do it I just can't think about how to deal with that now so I'll do it tomorrow and we look back at our life and nothing has shifted and nothing has changed but today we can make a decision and today God says I give you the choice between bondage and freedom life and death it is up to you you have a free will to say yes to God yes to his word yes to I believe it yes I will begin today I will begin to forgive I will begin to serve yes today I will get plugged into church today I'm going to start loving people unconditionally today I'm going to start confronting some issues today I'm going to do it Today is the day. Today is the day. We don't have to live. How ridiculous. One more night with the frogs. You two said a statement in his songs. I don't know if y'all know of you two. Anyone you two fans? Only two people in our church. We're a fearless church. I feel like all of you guys would be like rockers. <laughs> I'm old school. You, there's, a, there's a line that said, um, you got stuck in a moment. We got stuck in a moment. We can't get out of it. Stuck in a moment. You can't get out of it. I don't know if y'all heard that song. And I, I find it very interesting that many of us are stuck in a moment and we can't get out of it. I'm not saying even it's a culmination of a lot of things. Some of it is just literally one moment that we have allowed to, to, to destroy our present. Wow. One moment that has, one moment of disappointment, one moment of shame, one moment of rejection, wow. one moment of abuse, one moment where somebody neglected us, one moment where somebody uh, hurt us and walked out on us when we didn't expect it. it. It's one moment that has shaped and shaped and molded our life. And everything we do in the present has everything to do with what we were in yesterday, in the moment we were in yesterday. It has polluted our thoughts. It's polluted our thinking. It's polluted our decision making. We cannot be all that we're called to be because we are stuck in the moment of yesterday. We cannot get rid of it. And it's not because God doesn't want us to be free. It's because sometimes we've sat in the seat of the victim for far too long and we're sitting in it. It feels good for people to feel sorry for me and feel people to, to go, are you okay? Are you okay? But there's a point where you've got to go, no, I'm okay. I've been bought with a price. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fearfully, I'm going to stand up out of this cage I'm in. I'm going to pull myself out of the dirt and the darkness I'm in. I have a choice today. I have a choice today. You don't have to feel sorry for me. Jesus paid it for me too. You don't have to feel bad. I don't have to sit here. If you, if you forgive and let go of your heart, you can't get the attention anymore, even if it's negative. So you sit there. And even if it's not good attention, it's attention. So we sit in that seat. And I'm telling you, it is the most miserable seat. What has that seat ever given to you? Whatever price has it ever paid for you? What has it ever done for you? What has that seat ever sacrificed for you? It's done nothing but steal and kill and destroy your life. The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So today is your choice. I give you right now life more abundantly. I'm sorry. I know I'm a little crazy, but sometimes I get excited and passionate. And I know y'all are okay with that. I'm passionate about people walking out of the stuff. that they Living the way they were meant and destined and designed to live. 
I'm passionate about. Not, not, I have a holy anger, not towards you, but, but towards those things that stop you. And I want you to have that same kind of conviction when I'm preaching. That's what, that's what I pray transmits as I preach. I don't want this, that to be hard for you. I want you to go, oh, yeah, you're right. Why am I not getting, like, a holy anger against this? Like, I've lived with this. I've accepted this. No, 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 no. That's, that's not. That's, I'm living too low of a life of what God has, has paid for me. No, that's not okay. It doesn't matter where you started. It doesn't matter where. We've all had different beginning lines. We've all had different, different upbringings, different families. But we all have the same opportunity for freedom. We have the same opportunity in this room. We all can get to the, the same place right now. It doesn't matter where we We all start at different places. We all, some were hurt, some were in good families. Some, no, no, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's go, hey, today. He, he didn't die for one person in this room. He died for every single one of us. He, he's, he, he's, he said you could appropriate that victory into your life and everything. Whatever, whatever area of sin that keeps just entangling you, you just feel like you can't get out of it. His, his blood is enough. Whatever, whatever area of fear, rejection, self-hatred, whatever those things are, he goes, my, my blood is enough. What I've done is enough. Fill in the blank. Whatever fraud that you've been dealing with, he says, I am enough. I am enough. And when you say tomorrow, it, it, it really nullifies the power of what he's done on the cross for us, right? Right? Go, that's not enough. No, it is. It is enough for you. He loves you so much. He adores you. He wants you. What a, what a beautiful, what a beautiful moment in today to, you know, even if you're not a mom or dad, most of you would, would say you want to be that. And I would hate for you to, to bring in things to your family that, you know, you, you treat your husband, your wife a certain way, and they're paying the price for things that they never did to you. Your kids are paying for things they never did to you. And you're treating because you decided God's not decided. He goes, I, I already gave this to you. Hey, will you just take it? And not feel like, hey, some of you go, I have to, I don't deserve it. No, we none of us deserve it. None of us deserve this. He's that he says, no matter where you're at, like what, what you've walked through, no matter what you've done, he goes, I love you and I offer this freedom to you. And many people in our family have uh, my mom and dad and his side. We've gone through uh, a lot in our life, and my family's gone through a lot. My dad uh, had a, didn't have a Christian upbringing, even though he's a pastor now. He had a very abusive upbringing. He had uh, alcoholics as his parents. Uh, they were very angry, angry, angry people. Um, I hardly was around them because they were so angry. Um, they, he grew up in this environment where he's very, very, very rejected. And my dad grew up, he, he got radically saved in college, and he gave his life to God, and he knew he was supposed to go into full-time ministry, and he, he became a pastor, and if anything, things don't get better, things got worse, and um, his sister, um, my dad's sister died of ovarian cancer at the age of 30, and she left three little babies behind, and it was devastating for my family and, and my grandma, my dad's dad, my dad's parents, because they they wanted to believe in God, they were kind of there, but then God didn't heal her. So I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if I believe in this. How could you give your life to God and serving, doing all this, being a pastor, and God didn't heal her? And 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 they they said, I'm going to disown you. I'm disowning you. I'm not just disowning you. I'm disowning the whole entire family and your kids. Disowned me and my brother and my sister. We never heard from them. We tried to love them. We tried to call them. They would hang up on us. You know, those things. It, it was horrible. The rejection my dad felt. And I'm telling you, my dad could have easily continued to stay and wallow in that pain. He could have said, man, I'm just going to stay rejected. I just feel like a failure. I don't feel I've lost my family and guess what he said no 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 I'm not going to, 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 to wait on this I'm going to get some healing in my life my dad has gotten healing he's gotten healing in his heart he doesn't have the rejection he used to have I'm telling you he's another person right now at his 60 year old age than he was before he ended up leading his mom and dad to the Lord in the salvation prayer they gave their life to Jesus my papa went to heaven he died just not, not too long ago and he went to heaven and you know he's doing ministry he's paving the way for me to look and see that example I don't know my mom my mom she was in an abusive hard hard family her dad was very very sick he was addicted to nicotine he ended up dying of lung cancer had blood clots 
all over his body. He, they said it covered, blood clots covered it from his head to his toes. And he had a horrible stroke, massive stroke. My mom was 20 years old and he died. And he, and he left a lot of pain for my mom with, he just wasn't the father to her that she, she needed. And um, she, she had a lot of uh, failure. Fear was a huge thing for my mom, fear and rejection. And um, she said she became, I asked her, I go, mom, how did you, I, th this week I was asking her about it. She goes, I got very suicidal and I just wanted to take my life. But there was, there's somebody that ended up sharing the gospel with me and she goes, I got radically saved. And, and my mom ended up meeting my dad and they end up, they were saved, they were Christians and they, they have now done ministry. I'm going to tell you, we just celebrated. I went to see my family in Modesto, we celebrated 25 years that they've been doing ministry in Modesto at a church. And uh, uh, for 10 of uh, 25 years, over 136,000 people have given their life to Jesus Christ. 136,000 people. Come on, that's worth more than a putt putt clap. Come on, uh, we gotta clap and give God praise. Guess what? Hey, your pain, your pain is not in vain. Your pain is not in vain. There's a purpose. God doesn't waste a pain. He doesn't waste a moment. He doesn't waste a tear. He goes, I use it all. I use it all. I use the failures. I use the, the mess ups. I use the mishaps. I use the stupid decisions. I use it all. I use it to display my glory through you. He loves, he loves to use the broken people. He loves it. That's his best people, the broken people, because you don't get the glory at the end. It's got, got to be God. Man, he used you. He used Jeremy. He used Christy. Man, there's got to be a God that we come from God. We don't come from this great place. All of a sudden, he brings us to L.A. to bring people to Jesus in this, this big city. And there's got to be a God. We didn't come from this great family. Listen, his family, his mom grew up in a very, very broken family that his, his dad would uh, her dad would actually he was an alcoholic he would be drunk every single day she would work all night to pay bills she would go to school during the day she was delirious she would sometimes go to the police station to sleep because she couldn't find a place of, of safety of joy of solace so she'd go to the police station they didn't have money for a hotel room and sometimes when she'd go home she would come and she'd go I want to go out and he would her dad would put in blood the writing and the time she needed to be home on the wall how disgusting and perverted and gross and weird is this but listen I don't know if you know who mama Jay and Papa Jay are but they are the most free joyful happy people I have ever met and it is because not because they have been through they haven't been through anything they've been through a lot of junk they've been through a lot of pain but they say today I'm gonna make a decision that I'm not gonna live with the stuff and the frogs that I've been living with and today I'm not gonna wait till tomorrow to deal with it I am going going to do it today today is the day of salvation today is the day of redemption today is the day of breakthrough today is the day of deliverance today is the day to start changing some things tomorrow is the enemy's favorite word tomorrow is the devil's favorite word tomorrow is a, is a word of complacency of apathy of defeat of giving up no 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 Today is the enemy's most feared word. He, he is scared of a generation of people in this room, of fearless men and women that say, no, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live like he said I can live in this word. When you begin to stand up from the change that you've been in for so long and the addictions you've been in for so long, the enemy cannot stand it. He fears the day that you actually walk in the victory that God has appropriated for your life. Is there any people in this room that say, guess what? I'm going to do that today. I'm going to do what he fears the most. I'm not going to wait another moment. I'm not going to wait another another second I'm not gonna wait another week if you say that today I want you to give God a big praise today I'm gonna do it today I'm gonna put a line in the sand today I'm gonna shift some things in my life today I'm not going to go in the same direction come on is there any other people besides two or three that say yeah today today is what he has for me I know he has a great life for me I know he has a joy I know some of you are having a hard time receiving that today I'm saying you receive it in faith. It's very hard to, to understand in our mind. This book is, you have, to, you have to read it with faith. Some of you feel like you have too much. No, no, it's not too much. It's not too much. I want you to receive it. It's for you today. It's for you today. It's, and it's not just for you. As you can tell from these, my family and his family, 
because of what they've decided to do in that moment, not waiting. I think that's why I'm here today. And I think that's why I'm in full-time ministry and so are all my, my brothers and sisters in full-time ministry. Not only am I, but Jeremy and his sisters are in full-time ministry. I don't think that just happened because, I think it's because there was people that went before us that said, no, I'm not gonna let live like this and I'm not gonna keep this in my life. And because of that, Fearless LA exists today. And this is why this is a world-changing church, not because of me, but because God, what God has done in generations to allow this to happen today. I'm telling you, your freedom is not just for you. Your freedom is for hundreds and thousands and thousands of people. God wants to use your brokenness. God wants to use the hurt. God wants to use the rejections. God wants to use, it wasn't an accident that it happened. He wants to use it all. He says, I'll turn everything in Romans. I'll turn everything out that was horrible, that was disdainful. I'll turn it out. I'll turn it around for the good. When you begin to think of all the things that happened in your life that were painful, I just want you to look at, I just want you to like point at those things in your mind because like Joseph kind of said to his brothers, he goes, you know what? You meant this for harm. But you know what, God, you meant this for purpose and he goes he looks he's pointing at his brothers and he says you, you meant this to hurt me or God purposed this for a different reason it's to save many people this was to save many people I know you threw me in a pit you lied about me but Joseph goes hey this is going to save many people and we talk about Joseph to this day guess what we're going to talk about you for the rest of time not, not maybe if, if some of you have a de decision what are they going to say about you right we, we, can, we can have a different story though. We have a, a different story that we can live. Isn't that good? Amen.